The question is, where is the sound made? Instead of being made on the face of the cone, it's made at literally billions of little independent points along this narrow column in the air. And so when I aim it towards you, what you hear is made right next to your ears. I said we can shorten the column. We can spread it out to cover the couch. I can put it so that one ear hears one speaker, the other ear hears the other. Because the sound is made in the air along this column, it does not follow the inverse square law, which says it drops off about two-thirds every time you double the distance. 6 dB every time you go from one meter, for instance, to two meters. That means you go to a rock concert or a symphony and the guy in the front row gets the same level as the guy in the back row now, all of a sudden. So again, this idea of being able to put sound anywhere you want to is really starting to catch on. It also works for transmitting and communicating data. It also works five times better underwater. Uh, we've got the military had just deployed some of these into Iraq where you can put fake troop movements a quarter of a mile away on a hillside. <laughs> Or you can whisper in the ear of a supposed terrorist some biblical verse. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> and they have these infrared devices that can look at their countenance and see a fraction of a degree Kelvin in temperature shift from 100 yards away when they play this thing. And so another way of hope, hopefully determining who's friendly and who isn't. Uh, we make a version of this which puts out 155 decibels. Pain is 120. So it allows you to go nearly a mile away and communicate with people and there can be a public beach just off to the side and they don't even know it's turned on. We sell those to the military presently for about $70,000 and they're buying them as fast as we can make them.